Now, sparks are flying on Capitol Hill today. It got so hot, three members of Congress got up and marched out of a hearing. It all went down during a House committee hearing, taking up the issue of President Obama's contraception rule. Here is Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton taking on committee chair Daryl Issa directly. I asked the staff to get me the rules, Mr. Chairman. The and, lady and one thing, it. Mr. Chairman, we've been denied the right to have a witness. The lady, I want to have the, the right to make a parliamentary inquiry. And state your parliamentary inquiry. And minutes later, Congresswoman Norton, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, and Congressman Mike Quigley all stormed out of the hearing. Congressman Issa joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Well, great. And they didn't storm out of the hearing. They stormed to a press conference to, uh, to make an issue over what they didn't like, which was religious people, religious leaders of many denominations coming in to talk about the impact of the president and uh, uh, secretary's decision to not give them the normal broad exclusion of what is considered to be religious freedom and their execution. It was that simple. We had uh, ministers, uh, uh, we had a Lutheran minister, we obviously had a, a Catholic bishop, we also had a Jewish rabbi for whom none of the things being talked about were against their faith and yet he was saying for the same reason that this is a bad precedent. All right, um, did, were they given the opportunity to have a witness? I think Absolutely. You know, did, did, what, hap what happened with that? Um... Greta, Barry Lynn is well known to the show. Barry Lynn, Reverend Barry Lynn was uh, one of the witnesses they suggested. We invited him. We confirmed his receipt. He didn't show. Just didn't show up? Didn't show. What, uh, was there a reason he didn't show up? I mean, there's a no-show? Well, I think the Democrats uninvited him, but uh, he was their choice. He was one of their two choices, and he was the qualified one. Imagine, I've got the top leaders of several denominations there to speak on the issue of religious freedom and interpretation all the way back to the Constitution and George Washington's letters. And Reverend Barry Lynn was, was asked for, and we accepted him. He didn't show. They then wanted a different witness, a college student who really didn't belong on that panel for obvious reasons. Why did they want, the, it was a law student from Georgetown, why did they want a law student? Well, she had a, a compelling story, a very sad story of a classmate who developed a, an ovarian cyst that might have been prevented by using contraceptions in another, another way. One that, by the way, the Catholic bishop and everyone else there said is fully allowed uh, under their faith, that uh, they don't have a problem with that. But it was one of those things where her story was compelling, but it wasn't in any way related to the point of the stated reason for the hearing. Is there, okay, so she, but, but they wanted her. And what you said that they couldn't have her. Well, what that we was did too was, late. Well, they were way too late for any witness. They, we noticed this a week ago. Uh, we kept asking and asking uh, Monday, Tuesday, finally Wednesday at the end of the day, they gave us two names. We picked one. The tradition for, under Republican and Democratic leaders, the tradition is the minority gets one witness qualified of their choice. They put up two, we accepted one. And there's and a no-show. And was was that, no that was no show? He was a no well, show. Now that's and we peculiar. I mean, well, I, I, I actually, we would have loved to have had him because even though I disagree with him on over, almost every interpretation of church and state, the fact is he's spoken, he's well known on it, and he was their choice. Uh, what, where does this hearing go? I mean, what, tell, me, tell me what you is the uh, product you hope to get. Well, what we did was we, we heard from people who are the experts. And I'll, I'll again go back. On what? On religious freedom, right? Uh, well, on their religions and how their systems work. You know, we had, we had university presidents. We, we obviously had these religious leaders, including the one who, the, the Bishop Laurie, who speaks for all the bishops uh, of the Catholic Church in this country. To give us their views, but was it? I'm mean, because it, is it a, a vision? I mean, the issue, is, as I see it, is a, a rather straightforward constitutional issue, which is uh, freedom of religion. And when does the government step on your right to practice your religion? You see, it's, it's more, it's more than, than that, that? It's when does the ch when is the church told what to do by the state? Because it's it's beyond. Well, that's the same. I mean, that's I mean, that's broad. I mean, it's, that's stepping on your right. When the minute the minute the minute the government gets into the religion business, it's stepping on it. It's stepping on the right. It's it's inconsistent with any history. And there's one of the things we we tried to get the Democrats to come up with. Please, 
or those anyone on the other but, side please tell us where there is a precedent for what the president and the secretary are doing and there isn't one. I suppose if the, I suppose if, if the religion were you know committing mass murder I mean you can step in at that point it's not unfettered I mean it would be an unusual <laughs> church that had yeah, that no, as a tenet right. of their religion it's, that it's, it's not you know it's not you know as it's not all, uh, as absolute but um, in, in, in this instance is the White House backing off that accommodation because the bishop soon to be Cardinal Dolan is very much opposed to it as many Catholics are are they now backing off that accommodation? Well, clearly there's no accommodation. Uh, Bishop Bad Lor word, but that's what they call it. I know, but Bishop Laurie explained it, and it was actually sort of humorous to have a rabbi there. Well, the priest explained that if you were Jewish and if you were asked to serve ham, and you said, well, I can't serve ham. They said, okay, you don't have to serve ham, but your vendor must bring in ham and serve it for free to anyone who wants it. And he went through, and with great length, the fact that the accommodation... But is, it, is the White House backing off? Is the White yeah. House saying, I got it, that wasn't a good accommodation, we're going to go to another plan, and here it is? I hope they will. I hope they'll recognize that within religious faith and the missions they do, which includes educating, includes the universities and so on, within those institutions that are primary to their, 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 their faith, that they should have the ability to have a broad exemption. That's the history. Now, I would like to have an exemption too, but I'm not, I can't stand behind religion per se. These people can and do and have for 230 years. Well, the thing is, if, they don't, if the White House doesn't come up with an accommodation and it runs counter to the Catholic Church, it really is declaring war in a in a war we simply don't need. You well, know, I mean, a, a political war. It's it's declaring war, but not on Catholics. The Lutheran. No, but it, the to Lutherans the extent, stand there saying the same thing. And well, a no, the, I mean, the whole idea is if you're, ne you're next, is the whole you're point. Next. You're and next if you don't. And that's why we had a rabbi there saying, I don't object to abortion. I don't object to contraception. This is not about the issue of the items that are contained, but I must be here because, in fact, this is wrong to do on a religion, and tomorrow it could be could my be faith. Right. Congressman, thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta. Straight ahead, Congressman.